This is on page 57. The key about any technology is the effect it has. The effect of Gutenberg's printing press in the 1400s, mid-1400s, right, right when this course begins, 1440s, she's developing it, 1450s, it's publishing books. The effect is it will transmit information. And what types of information, what types of writing, writings will be communicated using the printing press? The humanist learning of Renaissance scholars, the writings of Erasmus, for example, those will be published and spread. So the Renaissance humanism. The writings of Protestant reformers and Catholic reformers will be spread amidst the Reformation. And of course, scientific writings will be spread as well. And so we see these intellectual movements, the Renaissance, the Reformation, the scientific revolution. We see these uh, as a result of the printing press. Uh, and of course, the printing press will allow, which will allow for the expansion of education across Europe in the successive centuries. And there's other things leading to more education, right? Obviously, the Protestant Reformation encourages reading the Bible. The uh, Catholic Reformation also encourages education so that people are learned in the faith. And also, obviously, more wealth as a result of the commercial revolution, as a result of the Atlantic sea trade and overseas trade. This means that there's more money to spend on education for the bourgeoisie to educate their children. So there's other issues that are increasing education as well, but of course, the printing press allows more books to exist, it allows people to have more access to this information, and it allows people to get educated. And so it's not surprisingly, uh, you know, that will lead to the Enlightenment and, uh, you know, everything else that we get to. Okay. <laughs> Is that it again? Okay. <laughs> Hey. Hey. All right then. All right. Sailing innovations. Sailing innovations made in the 15th and 16th centuries include better sailing, better sails, and better rigging for those sails, so that uh, humans can harness the winds better at sea. Larger and sturdier ships, reliable compasses, more accurate maps. And so these sailing innovations, well, what effect will they have? This is the key. The effect is, is that they allow for the opening of the Atlantic. The opening of the Atlantic overseas trade. The Columbian Exchange which will mean the, re the introduction of new species to Europe and new species to the Western Hemisphere that will change the populations there. For example, the Columbian Exchange will introduce the potato to Europe, which will become a staple of the peasant diet and will allow for a population expansion. The population expansion will be a factor in uh, the price revolution or gradual inflation in Europe which will lead to the commercial revolution, more commerce, because there's more people to trade, which will lead to more prosperity in Europe. So these sailing innovations uh, will not just lead to economic growth, but also cultural changes, or intellectual changes. Uh, people will be exposed to new, distant worlds. And so there will be all sorts of ideas as a result of this. Montaigne, a skeptic, will write in his essays about these different places, he'll write in an essay on cannibalism, how a cannibalistic society, maybe, you know, that's not wrong. It's all relative what's right or wrong. And they practice cannibalism as Europeans have all sorts of strange beliefs for themselves. So he's a skeptic as a result of <coughs> what he encounters or is inspired by when observing overseas cultures. Or Thomas More, for example, who, when exposed to the radically different societies in the New World, thinks that, not that these New World societies are better, 
but surmises in his utopia that perhaps Europe, Europe could be better and that there are European customs and traditions that are kind of silly and, in fact, don't make the most sense. So uh, it's interesting that these sailing innovations obviously have effects on the economy. They have an effect on that they help, uh, you know, allow for an expanding bourgeoisie, larger trade routes, introduction of new uh, agriculture, which allows for an expanding population. But they also have an intellectual effect on Europe as well. The scientific revolution, a key innovation we'd want to mention, perhaps, if discussing that, is Galileo's telescope. And while Galileo is not the first person to ever think of using a magnified lens to look out at the sky, he does perfect the first modern telescope in Italy. And with it, he's able to look at the moon, and he sees that the moon is not perfect. It's not some crystalline sphere. But in fact, the moon is made of earth and rocks. The moon has imperfections like the earth. He's able to look out at Jupiter, and he sees that Jupiter likewise is not some crystalline sphere. And Jupiter itself is full of, uh, or is surrounded by satellites or moons of her own. And Galileo will also be able to look at the sun, and he sees that the sun has sunspots. And so the sun, too, is not a crystalline sphere. And the result of these discoveries will be further evidence that the Ptolemaic version of the universe is wrong. The Ptolemaic version of the universe, that the Earth, the geocentric uh, you know, vision, the Earth is the center, and these crystalline spheres are uh, holding up these heavenly orbs that are these planets, in the sky, this is incorrect. And Galileo's discoveries will also importantly reveal this, that the Earth is not unique. The Earth is not the only world. If world is a place that someone could stand on, if world is a place with geographic features, the world is not, the, the Earth is not the only world, the Earth is not the only planet with satellites going around it. And so Galileo's uh, discoveries with the telescope reveal, in his mind, enough evidence that the heliocentric version of the universe is much more accurate. That the Sun is the center of the solar system, and the Earth is merely one of many planets that are rotating around it. 